Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to another Lightroom editing tutorial. It's been a while since I've done one of these, but today I'm gonna to jump straight into it, getting into how to edit like short stash. Garrett King, one of my favorite photographers on Instagram at the moment. He has such a unique, incredible style. His colors are just absolutely amazing. He has a very specific color palette, bringing in a lot of oranges as well as this desaturated steel gray kind of blue color. Also, he just has amazing landscape pictures and has really cool lifestyle elements as well. Just getting some really documentary style photos as well. Telling stories through his photos is what I think really captivates the audience. So just talking a bit more on the style, I think he has a very flat, but at the same time, very contrasty style. It's weird in a way. From what I can see, his highlights are never really blown out, meaning that he never has pure whites in his photos. Even just looking at it on Instagram with the white borders around it, you can see that there isn't ever the color white in his photos. It seems that he shoots predominantly at sunset or blue hour, which gives him that nice soft golden light or that really soft blue light that you see in this series. It also seems that he predominantly shoots at an aperture of f1.4, meaning that there's only a very small part of the picture that's actually in focus, as we can see of this one with the seal. Only his face is actually in focus, but the rest of the background is all blurry. And by doing that, this also just helps create that smooth look and feel that he gets throughout the whole of his feed. So jumping in to Lightroom, first of all, I just want to say that the edit isn't actually going to make your photos look like his photos. It's really all in the way he takes his pictures. So if you really want to get into it, study the way he takes his photographs and it'll make the whole editing process a lot easier. So without further ado, let's jump into it. First things first, we are going to make this super flat by bringing down all of those highlights and bringing up the shadows. Oh, also, I just wanted to say that I got this image on the left just as a reference because I feel like it's the most similar one I could find. I have a whole bunch down here just to compare the colors and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, starting out making it super flat, highlights down, shadows up. I'm going to bring the whites up just a little bit just so we don't lose that contrast, but we still keep the detail in the highlights. Then also going to bring down the black as well just to boost up that contrast a little bit. Not going to do anything to the clarity, the dehaze, vibrance or saturation as of right now. We could even just bring the contrast up a little bit more and already just by the before and after we can see that we've added some contrast in but still keeping that flat look and feel. Up next we're going to move on to the tone curve just starting it out nice and simple with a basic S curve just dropping points all along here and just doing that until I think it looks good. I'm gonna bring the fade up just a little bit as well. It seems that a lot of these photos do have the slight bit of fade on it, as well as a fade in the highlight. So like I was saying, how he doesn't really have any pure whites in his photos. So as you can see in this area here, it's kind of a little bit too white if we compare it to the border. So all I'm gonna do is just drag down this point on the top of the tone curve until we lose that pure white. And just by doing that, we've already flattened out the photo a bit more, flattened out the highlights, and it's starting to look good. Up next, I'm gonna go over to the blue tone curve, and I'm just gonna start by dropping a point in the middle so that we don't affect any of the highlights. And then what I'm gonna do is just drop another point below on the shadows here, and then just very slightly bring up the tail end of the blues just to add this slight blue tint in the shadows. You can see if I push it, far enough you can see that it's obviously adding blues in but we want to make it very subtle so just a slight bluish tinge to it we could also even do this with the reds just bring it down a little bit to give it a bit more of a teal look so again just super slight and you can see just by doing that okay that's a bit much but you can see how it adds that teal look into the shadows so i'm just going to take it down very slightly I don't even want to do it too much because in this reference photo he's kind of got his blacks at pure black but a lot of his photos he does actually have it with that blue teal tinge in the shadows. So it really just depends from photo to photo and I don't think he has one exact way of editing his photos. I think he kind of just edits it according to the mood and the lighting of that specific photo. So yeah, this is just showing you the basics of pretty much how to achieve the look that he does. So I think that's all for the tone curves for right now. Up next, we're gonna move on to the colors and this is where it really comes to life. I think I'm gonna start with the split toning um, just to do this before we move on to the HSL colors. And I'm gonna drop a nice warm tint into 
the highlights, just bringing it up to about that 50 mark. And I'm gonna take down the saturation as well to about 10, 11, 12, somewhere around there. And then I'm gonna add a nice cool blue into the shadows, probably around somewhere over there. And then just bring this up to about seven. Okay, I know what you're thinking. It looks very saturated right now, but we're gonna fix this with the HSL colors. And most importantly is the blues. Like I said already, Chore Stash has a lot of these steel blues in his photos, very desaturated blues. So we're gonna try and just do that with our one as well and bring down the saturation of those blues. So just bringing down that saturation and already we can see how his look and feel is starting to come into the shots. Just gonna bring down the luminance ever so slightly as well. Also just gonna come into the aqua, move that more into the blue side and drop that as well. And then just to fix up the foreground here, there's a little bit of green and yellow in it. So I'm gonna bring the yellows all the way into the orange. He hardly ever shows green in his photos. Very often he'll change it into the orange, yellow kind of tones. And even when he does have green, it's very desaturated as you can see with this reference photo right here. So I'm just gonna drop these greens quite a bit and also bring it into the yellow side. I think we can add a bit of clarity to this one. Not too much though, because I don't want to make the shadows too dark. I want to keep that flat feel. Maybe we could even drop the contrast a little bit. Maybe just bump the blues up a little bit more. I think one thing that'll really change this picture is if I bring the red primary hue up a little bit to the right hand side, not all the way, but just a bit. I feel like that makes quite a difference. He also seems to add vignettes to some of his photos, not all of them, but I'm gonna add a vignette to this one just to bring a bit more focus to the center of the picture. Let's see what it looks like if we bring up this temperature just a bit. I think that's looking a bit better. At this point, I'm really just playing around with it to see what the best options are, but again, it really just depends on the picture that you have and the different lighting situations that you do get. For right now, I'm happy with how this looks and I think we've nailed the colors pretty well. Getting that split between the light blues and the light orangey yellow color in the mountains and the sky as well. So up next, I'm gonna move on to the sharky picture which I took at the aquarium and I feel like it's quite similar to this photo that Short Stash took as well at an aquarium of a turtle. So what I'm gonna do is just start off by copying exactly the same settings as I had on the last picture. So just hitting Command C and then making sure that exposure and white balance are not checked. Hit copy on that, and if we come over to the shark, command V, and that should paste the settings on there. And already we're starting to see how that comes through. I'm gonna drop the blue even more, drop the aquas even more. We definitely need to bring the exposure up, that's for sure. So just bring that up, add a little bit more blue back into this one. You could also just bring that hue a bit more into the teal side. Um, I'm also gonna just bring a brush over the details of the shark just to make it a bit more detailed and stand out. So just going over the eyes, the gills and the teeth, bring up the shadows and then bring up that clarity. So just flipping that on and off, it's a very small adjustment, but I feel like it makes quite a big difference in bringing detail into the shark. So I'm gonna hit down on that. I'm gonna go back to the main tone curve and just bring up these shadows. I feel like it's a little bit too dark in the shadows and then also bring up the midtones and bring up the highlights just to add a bit more contrast to that. Just playing around with it until we find the right look and feel. This picture also has a lot of noise to it. It was quite dark in the aquarium. So I'm gonna come to noise reduction, just bring up that luminance and it should take away all this grainy noise that we have in here. That's looking better. But right now it's really just playing around with the blues until you find that exact color. Bring up the luminance, bring up the saturation. I think that's looking pretty accurate. Uh, it's gonna be difficult to match it exactly, but again, it's really just about how the picture is taken in order to get the same look and feel. So again, I'm gonna hit Command C on this picture, copy these settings over to the next one, which again has a really minimalistic approach to it. It is a shot I took of my friend Mitchell in New York with the freedom to in the background going up into these moody, misty clouds. A lot of these photos are taken in this moody, misty kind of setting, whether it's overcast or it's raining or it's sunsets. There's always just really some kind of atmosphere and mood to the scene that he's shooting. Just gonna hit Command V on this and hopefully that'll be a straight edit. It is not, oh, I see it's copied the, the brush as well, so I'm just gonna clear that. Um, 
that's all good. Obviously, this is a little bit too dark for my liking, so I'm going to bring those highlights up. I'm going to bring the exposure up quite a bit. Um, what else am I going to do? I'm going to take the aquas all the way down. I'm going to move these blues a little bit more down and also move it a bit more into into the purplish side just to balance that out and then we're gonna bring up the tone curve just a bit not too much i feel like these aquas are still affecting the picture quite a bit even though it's all the way desaturated you can see even though i moved the hue it's still affecting it so i'm gonna move the hue all the way into the blue side and that is looking much better let's bring the exposure up just a little bit to brighten that up bring these highlights down and there we go that is looking good i'm happy with these colors Again, getting that nice desaturated moody feel. You can see if we just compare it side by side with this, that we do have that same color range. But uh, yeah, I think that is looking good. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Did I nail the style? Did I not? What could I have done differently? Again, like I said, all of these edits are super different. Um, I don't think he has exactly one kind of editing style. It really just depends on the picture, the scene, the lighting. So take these edits with a grain of salt. It is just like the basic structure of how I think he does do it, but it can be applied to a lot of photos. So yeah, just be mindful of how you're taking your photos and then that'll make the editing process a lot easier to try and get a style like this. Um, again, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, please leave a like. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. And in the meantime, remember to stay weird, don't die, and make it happen. I'll see you guys in the next one.